Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Ken, and today we are going to continue our lesson series on the book of Genesis. Last week we left off with the exciting rescue of Lot. And today we're going to continue with Genesis chapter 15. So if you want to see the notes, click in the lower left-hand corner. The notes section will open up. If you want to print them off, save them as a PDF. And you can print them and come back. So get your Bible, get your pen, get your cup of water, cup of coffee, whatever you want. Get your notebook and your Bible open to Genesis chapter 15. Now, Genesis chapter 15, God confirms the covenant with Abram. I probably should have put reconfirms because God several times reconfirms, reassures Abraham of his promises. Question number one, God always speaks to our fears and doubts. How many times in Jesus' ministry, when he came to people, talked to them, how many times did he say, fear not? When messengers from heaven have appeared to people, fear not. God always speaks to our fears and doubts. It's not wrong to have fears and doubts. So the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. God's word comes to us in many forms. Sometimes God will appear to us as a personal appearance in the word of God. We've seen Jesus appear in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, appearance of Jesus would have been called a theophany, the presence of God. In the New Testament, we have Jesus and he appeared he was born. We see that after the resurrection, he came several times. He appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos. We see God speaks, as he said, in visions, in dreams, sometimes by an angel, and the word of God. Hebrews 1 tells us that in old times, God spoke directly. You know, reading through the Bible uh, on a, by the year, uh, there was a place when God was leading the children of Israel through Moses. And uh, Moses was told, I'm, God said, I'm going to speak to you. Uh, and then I'm, you're going to share uh, this vision with the children of Israel. And so uh, God says to Abram, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your great reward. Now, this comes after Abram rescued Lot. Remember, he said, don't be afraid and I am your great reward. Remember, Abraham would not take a reward for what he did by rescuing all the five kings of the plain. So this comes after the rescue. The big question is, in question number two, who's going to rescue Abram? Think about this in your own life. How many, how many people, how many things, how many situations are you the rescuer? Think of people that you have come to their rescue in your family, where you work, maybe where you shop, what you do. Think about all of those things, how that you are the rescuer. Who rescues you? That's, that's a lot of pressure. And who's, would the four kings of the East retaliate? Would, would those uh, nations that way gang up on Abram, you know? Sometimes we take a stand for the Lord and we'll get ambushed later. So Abram needed a reward. He had denied himself. So what did God say? God said, I am your exceeding reward. Not just a reward. I'm uh, your exceeding reward. The Lord knows what we need. We need to trust him. Now, question number three. Abram feels the clock ticking on God's promise. Abram isn't getting any younger. Sarah isn't getting any younger. No baby. No heir. Now, he's separated from Lot. So that answers out. You know? Maybe, you know, that uh, an ace up your sleeve, that expression in cards you'd be cheating well maybe abram thought that abram was uh, going to be blessed with children through lot 
And that's not what was going to happen. That answer is gone. They're, they've separated. And then, so Abram asked God, is Eliezer, who was his chief steward over everything, is Eliezer to be my heir? And if I die right now, Eliezer would get everything. It would go to him. And God says, no, you're going to, you're going to be a great man. You're going to have many, many children and grandchildren. And Abram said, well, what assurance uh, with you will you give me? What assurance? And uh, he says, you have given me no offspring quote, uh, uh, to fulfill your word in parentheses. All right. You keep saying this, but I haven't seen anything. God said to Abram, Eliezer is not your heir. Oh, you're going to take care of him. He'll be blessed. But he says, you will father a son. He will be from your own body. You're going to be the physical father of a son. Your descendants will be like the stars in the heavens. He takes them outside, look up at night, and he says, look at the stars. Can you see, the, can you count the stars? And it says that Abram believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted it to him for righteousness. Now, this is really important. We can't, we can't just read over this real quick and let it go. We have to see, this is the first use of the word believe and righteousness in the Bible. And so we think about this. He had faith to believe in the Lord, and the Lord turned around to him and counted it for righteousness because Abram had faith in what the Lord said. He had faith in the word of God. Now, God repeats his promise that Abram will inherit the land. And Abram asked the question. It's okay to ask God questions. How shall I know this? How do I know this is going to happen? We don't know if all this happened at the same time. This could have happened over a period of time. Okay? We read in just a few chapters before this that he reaffirmed his promise. <clears throat> this is probably years later. And so the author is simply relating Abram's doubts. It, we're the same way, right? Uh, if you've been serving the Lord for a long time, you can probably look back in all honesty, you can probably look back in your lifetime and when you went through a period of weakness or a period of doubt and you wonder, it, and then other times you're not even thinking about it at all, you're just right gung-ho after the Lord and, and then other times you have, well, am I going to make it? That's normal. And the author is simply telling us that Abram had doubts once in a while, just like you and me. So here comes the covenant, and it goes into really great detail uh, of this covenant. And this is a legal contract of the time period. Uh, now, this would be really strange to us today, but think about a legal contract today, but then at walk with me as we go through this uh, contract. God tells Abram to bring several very specific animals, and he tells them that they he splits them in half, okay, right down the middle, and he puts one on each side, okay? There's you can walk between the two halves, and then you take the next animal and you split it, and you take next animal, and the next animal, but then he gives some birds, and you don't split the birds, you make them. Uh, keep them whole. And so uh, this is what they would do. They take an animal and they would cut it in half. And then both parties would walk between the two halves and they would speak the terms of the covenant. Whatever the agreement was, they would speak it as they're walking through the halves of the animals. The covenant was sealed with blood. Okay, breaking the covenant, if you walk through between the halves and you, uh, you signed the contract by white walking through and by repeating the specifics of the covenant, it meant that if you break the covenant, it meant the same, <laughs> that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to be cut in half. So it means you break, you break the terms of this contract 
uh, you're going to forfeit your life. This was a very, very serious uh, contract. It was not just done with Abram here. This was, uh, you know, of the day. You know, like today when you uh, sign a contract, you buy a car or something, uh, sometimes you have to sign something and then you have to have a witness to it. And then that becomes a legal, legal binding document. You don't pay, you don't meet the terms, then, you know, you're going to have to pay dearly. Now, the prologue to the covenant came at sundown. And so Abram is uh, there before the Lord, and God caused a great sleep to fall on Abram. And while Abram was in this deep sleep, he has a great vision before the Lord. And the Lord says, your descendants will be strangers in a land not theirs. So God is preparing him to what's going to happen to his people. Now, he says to them, him, they're going to be there for 400 years. The nation well, they serve. God says he's going to judge them, but they will come out with great possessions. And so God is giving Abram a word of warning here. Even though he's telling him you're going to be blessed, there is something's going to happen in the future. Your descendants are going to go somewhere to a land that's not theirs. And we already know what happened when Abram went down to Egypt, right? Abram doesn't have any clue what's going to happen there. Now, just a, a real quick side. Uh, we know the rest of the story. We know that Abram's grandson, Jacob, is going to have children. And one of his sons will be Joseph, Joseph the dreamer. And we're, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Uh, and we know that Jacob... Or Joseph goes down and becomes a leader in Egypt. He calls for his father to come down, and, and they move down there. And they're in Egypt for 400 years. And then there arose a pharaoh that didn't know Joseph or remember him or chose not to remember him. And then all of a sudden, they start oppressing the children of Israel. Uh, and we know that they were there for 400 years. And when they came out of Egypt, they had great possessions that they were blessed by the Egyptians. The Egyptians paid them to leave. Now, question number eight. In this vision where Abram is asleep, we see he sees a smoking oven and a torch pass between the sacrifices. Now, in the Old Testament, God often appeared as a cloud. And uh, here are some other ways that God has been seen. He appears as smoke. He's been seen as bright, shining glory. He has been seen as fire. And so in this, we see that God passes through the two halves of these animals, and he's telling Abram, this is what's going to happen, and I'm going to keep my word to you. Now, we know that when God appeared to Moses, how did he first appear to him? In the burning bush, in the fire. We see that when God brought them out of Egypt, and that they came to Mount Sinai, what was on the mountain? There were clouds and smoke and thunder and lightning. And God called Moses up to the uh, top of the mountain. When the children of Israel had built the tabernacle, the place of worship, what did God do? God came down as a cloud and he covered over the tabernacle and he blessed it. The camp of Israel during the day, there was a huge cloud over the tabernacle and the children of Israel. At night, this cloud turned into a pillar of fire in the middle of the camp. 
And so it would illuminate all through the night, a great night light uh, through the camp. They would have some way of seeing uh, even in the night. And so here God is showing in appearing to Abram to walk through the covenant. God was signing. God was doing his part. Now, as we read through uh, this chapter, we, we see that God, Abram did not sign the covenant. This was a covenant uh, that only required one signature. Abram did not walk between the sacrifices. This was not a conditional uh, contract based on anything that Abram did. This wasn't one of those, if you do this, then I will do that. No, instead, it was just as God had said. And we see that God was working this out, that it was not something dependent upon man. God signed it for both of them. The certainty is not on Abram. The impetus is not on Abram, but firmly on God. He was saying, may I be in cut in pieces if I don't keep my word. God goes on to name the boundaries of the land in question. This was a real land, a real land covenant. It was not a spiritual promise. Israel would really inherit this land someday. We're looking this back and we see it as true history. It happened just the way God said. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. We pray God's richest blessing upon you. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Lord, you are the one that keeps your promises to your people. We pray, Lord, today you would watch over us, keep us close to you, touch our bodies, provide for our table. Watch over us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We hope to see you in church tomorrow.